Working man with four kids and a son, Goma wife, Tim is the highly energized father in the McKeezy Horwood family. We met them on Monday, but today I spent the, the morning with Tim to see how, on a Wednesday rather, he balances family life and a career. Okay, so, um, you know, when I caught up with you yesterday, you were brushing your kids' hair and their yes. teeth and... I can see you haven't brushed yours for a long time. Yeah, I take it out on them. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been growing it since 1994. What do you call yeah. it? Dreadlock? Dreadlock Christie, because it's the same age as democracy, coincidentally. And funny enough, I was born in June 76. So I was born when the youth uprising kind of happened, which a lot of people say was the sort of start of the end of the system. And so I was born in June 76, started growing my hair in 94, so I'm physically part of this country in a weird way, you know. And when it touches the floors, you said to... That was always my goal, for, the, for my hair to touch the floor. And this year, there's a piece now that's touching the floor. No. So, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to be Shame it doesn't curve it over. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. I'm too scared to cut it, man. But I've always said, any day I feel like cutting it, I'll cut it. Yeah. I just don't feel like cutting it. I just yeah. like it. It's, it's, there's something there, but I don't know what it is. But yeah, I can imagine. It's, it's been on your hair for a long time, so yeah. it's going to be hard to leave. Yes. How, how do you balance work and bringing up four children? So we've got a little production company called Mashaba Media um, and we create television content, music content, just content in general. Um, and, and I mean the big job we've had over the last three years has been quite challenging because we shoot in Kenya. So I mean I was part of the team that launched the MTV brand in Africa. So we do a lot of work and over the years I've done a lot of work around the continent. So we've got quite a strong network there. So a lot of our work comes from outside of South Africa. So I do have to spend quite a lot of time traveling. Um, in the last three years, it means about four months of the year in Kenya. It's a long time. Um, it's a lot, it's a lot. And at the same time, we've been, in the last three years, we've had basically three kids. I mean, two kids in that time. But So it's been, yeah, it's been tough. I mean, but we, we find a way to make it work. I mean, even on those trips, you know, like I, I said yesterday, we always try and consider the family in every decision we make. And so far we've been able to get it to work. Obviously there's tough times, so it means like when I'm there for four months, I don't spend four months there entirely. And that's part of the deal that we do with the clients or the work we're doing is I have to come back every now and then. So I'd never be gone for more than two or three weeks and I'd come home for a few days and then go back. But it is hard during that time. But the beautiful thing is, when we're not shooting the rest, most of our other work and time then I'm in South Africa so I'm able to to be home a lot and spend a lot of the time with the kids so kind of make up for the time of not being here but it is it's a lot to juggle but I mean I think everyone in the world who's got children has to deal with that you yeah. just find a way to try and make it work and I think the number one rule we've had over the last few years is is put the family first just make sure you're always considering that mm -hmm. so any business decisions you make or jobs you take on make sure it doesn't compromise too much on the family so far and you really are a hands-on father, aren't you? Yeah. You're involved with the kids in the morning, yes. making their breakfast, and that's Absolutely. satisfying. Isn't it? it is. It's very satisfying. I mean, I think it's. I guess you could say it's a, being a hands-on father, but it's also more like looking at it like a team, like it's teamwork. Mm. Um, you know, we we all involved in bringing up these kids. It seems crazy that one person wouldn't be. Yeah. You know, we all have well, a responsibility. Point, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's got to be a team effort. So, yes, I'm hands-on. Um, but, but we all are. And we've got four kids, you kind of have to be, you know? Yes, and it is satisfying. And how do you keep your energy levels up? Um, sure. It's been, it's, I guess, just determination. I mean, we don't have a lot of time to rest, you know? So we just keep going. I think what, what keeps me motivated or keeps me strong is to know that there's an end to this hectic time. Because they're all so young, it's very hectic. But once we get through that barrier when they're all kind of like four up, then they're going to be this really tight group who are the similar age who can all sort of entertain each other and look after each other. So we've just got a very hard start and then it's, it's going to get easier. So and it's just like a few years of pushing. And what do you learn from your children and also being married to a woman who's a Sangoma? What has that taught you? Yo, a lot. I mean, even, yeah, I mean, the Sangoma thing is one thing, just the kind of woman that my wife is as well. She's very insightful in a lot of things. So I've also learned a lot just about fathering, about being a better person, being a better husband, 
Um, I think we do that for each other. We both have a very open relationship where we give each other feedback a lot. Um, and we both committed to trying to improve ourselves and be better people. So that, you know, for ourselves, selfishly, but also for each other, for our marriage. And then also for the kids. Like, what can we do the best to make sure they get the best example and they, they are brought up to be really strong, balanced, beautiful people. Um, so yes, I've learned a lot. I've learned how to self-reflect, you know, which I think has been the biggest thing and the biggest learning in marriage is like, you realize it's not about trying to make someone else the best partner for you. It's about you trying to be the best partner for them. And if you're both doing that, then, you know, that's, you learn a lot about yourself in the process versus learning about their flaws, you know. And tomorrow I'm going to be joining you to bed. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the camera. See that? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds really bad. <laughs>